Every racing fan has a favorite racing movie. Some fans love Days of Thunder, some may love Talladega Nights, or some may love Ford vs. Ferrari. Each of those movies has a fan favorite main character. Days of Thunder has Cole Trickle, played by Tom Cruise. Talladega Nights has Ricky Bobby, played by Will Ferrell. And Ford vs. Ferrari has Ken Miles, portrayed by Christian Bale. All three of those movies are fantastic in their own way. But what if I told you my favorite racing movie isn't either one of those three that I mentioned? You may think I'm crazy for saying that, but it's true. My favorite racing movie is the 1968 Disney movie, The Love Bug. The main character in The Love Bug is Jim Douglas, played by the late Dean Jones, who also happens to be my favorite actor. Many of you may have never heard of him, or some of you may have seen his face, but just didn't know his name. So I'm here to tell you who Dean was. This is the story of Dean Jones. Dean Carroll Jones was born on January 25, 1931 in Decatur, Alabama to Andrew Jones and Nolia Wilhite. As a student at the Riverside High School in Decatur, Dean hosted a local radio show called Dean Jones Sings. After high school, Dean enrolled at Asbury University as a member of the class of 1953. However, a year after enrolling at Asbury, Dean left to join the United States Navy during the Korean War. After his discharge from the Navy, Dean looked to resume his singing career. Dean was a really good singer, but he did have another talent, which would lead him to signing a contract with MGM in 1956. That talent was acting. After appearing in minor films and TV roles, such as the very first episode of The Dick Powell Show with Mickey Rooney and future President Ronald Reagan, and the 1957 Jailhouse Rock movie with Elvis Presley. Dean made his Broadway debut in the 1960 play There Was a Little Girl. He would later star in another 1960 Broadway show called Under the Yum Yum Tree, playing the role of David Manning. He would later reprise the role in the 1963 movie version. In 1962, Dean was cast in the NBC sitcom Ensign O'Toole, where he played the role of a junior officer aboard a U.S. Navy destroyer. Because Ensign O'Toole was the lead-in show to Walt Disney's The Wonderful World of Comedy, Disney ordered a copy of Dean's latest film, Under the Yum Yum Tree, to study his performance and would eventually sign him onto a number of movies in the 60s and 70s, with his first Disney film, being the 1965 hit, That Darn Cat. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, don't do that. You'll disturb it. What do you think he's doing to my customer? Well, I'm sorry. I've got to insist. You're not going to upset that cat. Burton, get that cat down. Burton, you stay right here. Dean's performance was very well received that it opened the door for him to star in more hit movies, including Blackbeard's Ghost and The Ugly Dachshund. All of Dean's success from these movies would lead him to landing the lead role in his most notable movie. Shortly before Walt Disney's death in 1966, Dean approached Walt with a script for a possible future movie. The script was about a story about the first sports car ever brought to America. Disney read the script and replied to Dean saying, I got a better story for you. That better car story would turn out to be the 1968 film, The Love Bug. The Love Bug is set in San Francisco and stars Dean as Jim Douglas, a down-on-his-luck race car driver with hardly a penny to his name. Jim lives in a firehouse turned house with his good friend Tennessee Steinmetz. After being denied a chance to race and Tennessee literally taking apart their only car and turning it into a sculpture, Jim goes to find and hopefully buy a new car so he can race. Jim comes across a European car dealership where he meets Carol Bennett, whom he develops a love interest with, and Peter Thorndike, whom he develops a rivalry with. Jim also meets an anthropomorphic Volkswagen Beetle, later named Herbie, and the two of them begin winning races, and Jim realizes that Herbie is alive. Later in the film, Jim, Herbie, along with Tennessee and Carol, take on Thorndike and his assistant, Havershaw, in one final race where the four of them together defeat Thorndike and Havershaw and Jim and Carol get married. 
The Love Bug was a box office success and very popular among fans that Disney would produce five more movies and a short-lived five-episode TV series in 1982. Dean would return for three of the later five movies and the TV series, reprising the role of Jim Douglas. In 1970, Dean was set to make his Broadway return in the musical Company, but withdrew shortly after opening night due to stress from ongoing divorce proceedings. Director Harold Prince agreed to replace Dean on the condition that Dean would open the show and record the cast album. Dean obliged and recorded the album. Somebody hurt me too deep. Somebody sit in my chair and ruin my sleep and make me aware of being alive. Although Dean was having a very successful career, he wasn't totally fulfilled by it. In a 1997 interview, Dean said, I was making $50,000 a week. I had the Ferraris and the beautiful women and all the rest of what I thought would satisfy my life. And it was empty, really empty. At the time, people saw Dean Jones as a happy man with the perfect life. But under that smile, Dean was living a lie. Dean forced himself to believe that Hollywood life would bring him happiness, but it would make him even more depressed. In his 1982 autobiography, Underrunning Laughter, Dean wrote that he heard voices in his head saying that his current lifestyle would never satisfy him, and he began to question his life. In 1973, Dean married his second wife, actress Lori Patrick, but it was in 1973 that Dean would have what he called a religious awakening. In late 1973, Dean was involved in a drunk driving accident that nearly took his life. He suffered multiple broken bones, a concussion, and profuse bleeding. After his recovery, Dean was in New Jersey re rehearsing for a play when he stood up and looked out a window. Standing there, Dean thought to himself, one day, I'm going to kill myself. It was at that moment that Dean reached his breaking point. He got down on his knees and called that to God. I've done everything in this world I thought would make me happy and it doesn't work, Dean said to himself. I have everything and I have nothing. I have no choice but to believe. If you don't exist, then I'm a dead man. And just like that, Dean was born again. The depression and emptiness that filled his body was gone and instantly replaced with joy and happiness. Dean immediately began to restore broken relationships and looked to rebuild his career with more redemptive roles. His first film role after his encounter with God was the 1976 Disney film, The Shaggy D.A. He also starred in the 1978 film, Born Again, portraying the role of Charles Coulson. The film was about Coulson's involvement in the Watergate scandal and his subsequent conversion to Christianity. In 1986, Dean starred in the one-man play titled St. John in Exile, where he played the role of John, one of Jesus' disciples who had been exiled to the island of Patmos. All alone, John reflects and tells the audience about his life, his faith, and his troubles. The play was well received by fans. As the years went on, Dean starred in many films and TV films and made cameos in a few TV shows. In 1992, Dean, who was always known for portraying the protagonist of many of his films, landed the role of Dr. Herman Varnick, the evil-hearted veterinarian in the film Beethoven. To be honest, I've seen Beethoven several times, and I have to say, Dean did a really great job playing the role of Dr. Varnick. Although it was weird seeing him play the role of a villain instead of the hero character, and ironically, in 1994, NBC released the cartoon series version of Beethoven, with Dean Jones voicing the role of George Newton, the main protagonist of the 1992 film. In 1995, 
Disney honored Dean Jones as a Disney legend. In 1998, Dean, along with his wife Lori, founded the Christian Rescue Committee, now the Christian Rescue Fund, which helps Christians, Jews, and others who have been persecuted because of their faith. Later in his career, Dean confined his roles to mostly Christian themed films, with his final film role being the direct-to-video film God Provides, before retiring from acting in 2009. Shortly before his retirement, Dean came to a different realization about the impact that film had on American culture. In an interview with Christianity Today, Dean said, film and television had been partially responsible for the, dis for the disconnect between our nation and our God. Dynamic but righteous entertainment can help reverse this trend. On September 2nd, 2015, I was driving through New Jersey on my way to visit a friend. I was scrolling through my social media accounts when I came across an article published by the New York Times. I read the title and I couldn't believe what I just read. I was speechless. The day prior, Dean Jones had passed away at the age of 84 after a battle with Parkinson's disease. I was crushed when I read that article. I remember having just got the Herbie DVD set and had recently watched all the Herbie films, and now the star of my favorite movie franchise was gone. Dean is survived by his wife Lori, his son, his two daughters, his eight grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Seven years later, I continue to watch Dean's films, mainly the ones that are available to watch, and every time I watch them, I become more and more impressed with his performances. He may not have been a big actor, like most of the actors and actresses are today, but he is very much remembered for his work, and for the fans that keep his legacy alive. Godspeed, Dean Jones. Godspeed. You don't understand what happens, do you? They make 10,000 cars, they make them exactly the same way, and one or two of them turn out to be something special.